All right, welcome back to Sunrise. Today, as you've seen, the, we've got Mr. Mecca here, the former governor of Imo State. Good morning, and thank you for coming on today. Yeah, good morning. You see, you haven't lost your green cap. But what informs this, this color and green cap, by the way? I love Nigeria. Um, this green symbolizes uh, my father's um, middle name. My oh. father was BMG. Uh, green uh, was his middle name. And I love our country. Uh, this symbolizes the color of our country. Oh, green, okay. Yeah. Interesting. But ever since, you know, the court case, we haven't heard from you. Not many have heard you say much uh, concerning what's happened and development in the state. What have you been doing before now, from that time up until recently? Introspection makes sense to um, take your time um, when you find yourself in that situation, that circumstance. It's, it's, it's important you, you take it easy. Um, uh, think through it. Um, how the journey um, to that point and the processes, um, the lessons to be learned, you internalize it and then you get ready uh, for tomorrow. Because by the grace of God, there's always a future. That's so, it tomorrow. What, what, what kind of lessons would it be in this case for you? I got a judgment that was most unexpected. But I thank God for his um, grace and the support of our people. Um, the preponderant support I got from people across our country, and in fact, the internal committee uh, gave me cause to be happy that indeed I... Um, served our people with dedication, honesty, and people appreciated my um, period of service to Imo. And so it made sense that, one, I thank God for that. Um, anything could have happened. And so whatever happens, the Bible tells us, you take it as it comes, and you have cause to thank God. And, of course, um, temptations are indeed part of life. Uh, trials and tribulations come to everyone, and so... When it comes your way, you take it, you internalize it, you reflect over it, and then you get ready. So what have I learned? Anything is possible. And so when it comes, you adjust, you get yourself ready um, for the next move. Well, it appears anything is possible in these elections now uh, because <laughs> things have since changed. Because right now, yes. the presidential candidates are quite uh, different, representing different parts of the country. And then there's this comment that's been making the rounds about comments that you made mm -hmm. concerning uh, persons who do, do not vote for, I think, your candidates, mm -hmm. considering them as saboteurs. What do you mean by that? Uh, uh, no, thank you very much, Chamberlain. Uh, I went to Ghana on the invitation of my um, kinsmen. I'm an Imbise man. I will celebrate um, the Iriji culture, New York Festival. And so well, for quite some time, my kinsmen in Ghana had requested me to come join them. And I felt it was important to do that. So I, I was speaking to... My kinsmen, that's, that, that's um, what it is, and predominantly uh, PDP members. And so, uh, knowing where we're coming from as a people, understanding our circumstance, understanding where the PDP administration left Nigeria, and the promises that were made to Nigerians by the APC then, who were surging to take over power, uh, they promised everything. They promised water, they promised light, they promised free education, they promised um, free housing, they promised prosperity, they promised the uh, stabilization of the Naira currency. I mean, you now know that all those things were mirage, they were deceitful and fraudulent. And those uh, promises obviously have never have, that have come to pass. And so when you talk about the future of our country, you get worried as people who may, for one reason or the other, be deceived into believing that you just wish that it happens. And so the desire for me for a PDP administration that has internal mechanisms of good governance uh, cannot be overemphasized. And so I spoke to our people consciously, people within the PDP, uh, to express the need for them not to sabotage our efforts in reclaiming power in 2023 so that Nigerians can see good governance. Because give it to the People's Democratic Party. One thing about us is that, yeah, there will be issues as you expect in any human conflagration. 
But we have ways of dealing with those issues. We disagree for among, within amongst ourselves, and we deal with them. So it's better you deal with issues. And so, incidentally, and I, uh, the issues have been put in a different context. And some, some persons, majority of whom love me, majority of whom believe in me, majority of whom have confidence in me, majority who have very huge expectations of me, uh, rightly so. Because so, so, some, the interpretation that they gave it yes. was that you were asking that no Southeasterners should vote yeah, for Labour Party candidates. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, that's what, that, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So, a huge expectation born out of abundant love and expectations to say, look, that I am as calling any or every Southeasterner, Igbo man at that, or indeed Nigerians who do not vote for my party as supporters, that cannot be. That is far from the truth, it's obviously. That is not me, it's not in my character. I believe in even in dissent from within my immediate nuclear family. So that cannot be. My position was very simple. I was speaking to our people. I'm an NBC man. And the PDP has been faithful to us. The PDP has given us support. They gave us opportunity to produce a governor in our state. And I said to them, we have an opportunity. And I called that they should not sabotage our efforts to reclaim power. And that was it. That was the context. And if you read through all, if you listen carefully, and incidentally, I have found that perhaps a number of persons who have made calls, either to my person, or to my family members, or to my friends and associates, have not had the opportunity or the privilege to watch the tape. If you do watch the tape, you find the context was certainly, is suddenly being blown out of proportion. However, I am responsible to a people. When a people show you love, people show you confidence, people believe in you, you also have need to respect their feelings. And so to all those, Millions of Nigerians, particularly of the South East Extraction, who feel hurt by my uh, choice of uh, use of language, uh, I'm deeply sorry about it. I do not mean to hurt anybody, and they have a right, obviously, to express their political opinion um, in any way, form, or shape. I have a lot of my friends who belong to other political parties, and we still relate, and, and yeah. we continue to relate. So um, it, it is my considered view that my People should accept me for whom I am and know that I am not um, a rude person, I'm not a disrespectful person, and I do not use words that are uncultured. I, am, uh, I thank God for the privilege of my upbringing. And mm. so that has guided me. And I, I believe that, would, um, that, that, would, that should be able to assuage them. It's a difficult, I mean, not, not, it's, it's a dynamic and different political time now. Perhaps particularly more so for the Southeasterners because yes, they've got yes, yes. Uh, one of theirs who's vying for that position. Same for every other region. But for them, isn't that going to be somewhat um, difficult or challenging for parties, your party, the APC as well? Because if people feel, look, they think they've had enough of those parties and so they're thinking now maybe just to go the way of Labour. After all, what's wrong with trying one of their own? How, was, how are those two parties, perhaps your party, how are you going to cope with that? The, the tension in the country is um, created by the terrible governance, the deceit governance by the um, current ruling um, APC. Everything they promised they have failed to deliver in. Uh, we've seen worsening situation in every sphere of life, be it economy, uh, be it in security, uh, be it infrastructural development, be it in rule of law, in every facet of life. So Nigeria is actually on a descent, a fast descent. So people are worried. And so there is heightened disappointment amongst our people. There is frustration in the land that's very palpable. In fact, people cannot imagine what the future holds in stock for us. And so I understand that disappointment. So though for them, the established political institutions are a problem. But I caution everyone to be careful. Now, for the APC, I do not see, I caution everyone that they do not mean well and they do not have the capacity, they do not have the organization, they don't have the infrastructure, they do not have the conscience to give to Nigerians what we expect. For my party, the PDP, one good thing, we lost the election in 2015, and we internally accepted it, that we made mistakes. And we came out to apologize to Nigerians, please forgive us for our mistakes, and we pray for an opportunity. Now, for us, we see 2023 as an opportunity for us to correct our mistakes. But some say you're making more mistakes internally now. No, no, I don't think so. It, you, you, you see, now, across the zones of the Federation, from the Northwest, we're growing numbers. In the Northeast, the realization is becoming clear that PDP is the option. 
In the north central, it's the same. Now, in the south, south, it's the same. In the southwest, in the south, it's yes. In the south, it's there are agitations. Born out of frustration that the APC at the south kept the south out of governance. And I mean, it's just really natural that our people should exhibit, show their frustration. A man won an election, unjustifiably, you took him out. That couldn't have happened in a pure democratic setting. And so there is palpable anger in the land. There's frustration. And so that is what has given rise to a movement, giving rise to frustration. And you understand it. However, I still believe that as the elections draw near, it becomes very clear the options, what they will be. And all I urge is we do not get so angry as to continue to make mistakes. But I think it's corrective for us. Mm. We in our party, we've learned, and that's why we're taking our time. You can see that what we are doing, we're being very deliberate. Two days ago, our president, I mean, we, 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 we set up, I mean, two days ago, the President campaign council was inaugurated fundamentally. As early as yesterday, our party came forward to, not, to have the first the inaugural meeting of the presidential campaign council, and we're getting ready to start. And so those issues that we know Nigerians are looking for, we're dealing with them. And I'm certain that the, the events of present day would mm -hmm. inform and guide our actions and activities and how we respond to Nigerians to yet again okay. secure well, their the, mandate. We'll examine some of those issues that you've talked about when we return in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We are with Emeka Ihedu, our former governor of Imo State. Well, speaking about the Southeast, there are many who wonder, uh, does the region, will they get it together this time, given the scenario that they are in? Because, I mean, if Labour Party is there, uh, BDP, uh, your presidential candidate was in Enugu last time out, saying, well, he is the most assured means of the Southeast getting the ticket, uh, getting to the presidency. And then the APC themselves also saying, no, we have a say in the Southeast. So how do you see all of this playing out? Well, the, the, the Southeast people are indeed um, a blessed group, very blessed tribe. Um, Debo's are respected um, across the globe. We have the best professionals um, in Europe and America in various spheres of um, endeavor, various spheres of life, in, be it in medicine, in technology, in, in engineering, in science and arts, um, in law. And in, in this country, we've shown that we lead the way in commerce. And so our Distinction is not in doubt, and we work hard. I, I know for the South, not, we are a proud, hard-working people. Um, so it, it's important that we believe that we are given the right atmosphere, the right climate, right opportunity to excel, to um, showcase our individual capacities and abilities. And that's what we look for, good governance. And that is what the APC has failed to give them. And so it's easy to dismiss the APC in the South is because they've had an opportunity. Did we give them this opportunity? We did Even not. Even though the state has an APC government well, in place? Well, I don't want to talk about that. You, 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 you know what you talk about. Um, legitimacy and illegitimacy. And what, I mean, look at a few days ago, um, they claimed that the federal government was um, uh, going to dredge um, the Orashi River and the river ports. I, as a legislator, I know um, that uh, ports, river ports, and dredging is exclusively uh, in the exclusive list. It, so it's not concurrently. So a state government cannot, in our present constitution, uh, undertake to do that. So yesterday, I, I saw the Minister of Transport um, disclaiming um, in every sense of the word that the federal government was ever involved. I mean, so that is what we talk about. Yet another So what the government was so trying to say is misleading. Well, well, I mean, it's for you to see deceits, and this is what they're all about. Today, they'll tell you they're doing this, which is not true. That's not how to govern a people. And that's why we have all the complications in the administration of the day. Because one, they were not prepared. They don't have the capacity to give the people what our people look forward to. And those are the questions. So for APC, Obviously, going to this election, they know that uh, for them in the South is a no-no. Now, for the PPP, the South has originally been a, a 
a, a PDP dominated area, and now we have this labor movement, which you must factor in, arising from the frustrations of the people, and that's understood. And led by one of their sons that is respected and appreciated, hardworking, I mean, so that gives us concern. But that means my party must have to work very hard. And that is what we're about to do. That was what showed uh, three days ago when Vice President Atiku Abubakar led um, other members of our party to interact with the leadership of the South East to say to them, and it's important for us to be reassured that if for any reason we in the South East will give support, what are the considerations we'll give support to? And then he started addressing that. So we begin to look at it. If we are convinced, and then we have the message to take to our people, then we'll be able to offer our people to look and listen. This is why you may go in this direction, and these are the circumstances, which I think in the next couple of days and weeks, uh, we'll begin to see what are options, what are the opportunities. Mm -hmm. But we'll converse, given the strength and diversity of the People's Democratic Party, when we appreciate the fact that uh, to win a national election, you need to be uh, very well entrenched in the various zones of the country. So probably the advantage the PDP may have in the South is, is the fact that when election time comes, we now begin to look at the strengths of every party. And if our people are convinced that the PDP is indeed well entrenched in every nook and cranny of this country and that they have the most potential to win the election, then that mm -hmm. might... Uh, that might uh, that might sweep the pendulum in our favor. Well, there, there are hurdles within your party, but let, let's go to Lagos. Perhaps that will equally pop up. Go ahead, guys. All right, thank you, Chamberlain. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Hedioha. Um, you know, just as you have said it, it's true that uh, the people of Southeast Extraction have capacity, competence. They're brilliant people. And uh, you uh, made a comment earlier about how the APC has denied them that, that opportunity for expression. Uh, but the same could have been said of the PDP denying them that opportunity for ex expression, particularly ahead of the primaries, when that uh, agitation was intense. For this time, um, the Southeast be given the opportunity uh, to be on the ballot, at least to get the ticket. Uh, that's on the one hand. Um, with, with due respect to your convictions as, um, you know, a PDP uh, stakeholder, um, what do you think about the emergence of um, uh, former governor of Anambra State, Peter Obi, on the ballot? Isn't this an opportunity for the Southeast to get that, uh, actualize that age-long dream of, um, you know, taking the number one seat in the country? Yeah, thank you very much. I, um, I, our party, I was one of those who advocated for micro-zoning of the uh, presidency to the southeast. If it was micro-zoned to the southeast, um, it would have been um, easy for us to have um, a man from southeast extraction. In fact, as a matter of fact, I told my friend and brother, uh, Governor Peter B, then when he was in our party, that um, we should focus our attention on narrowing the debate then rather than a broad southern presidency to southeast uh, presidency. If we had that in, uh, maybe um, we would have been in, in a good shape. But I knew that once it was left um, added to the larger south, I knew that we may not be able to make it. And um, so for me, you look at your options. What are those options? You look at partnerships that will work. And I'll give a man of Southeast um, extraction an opportunity and privilege to uh, carry the cross of our party, to be the flag bearer of our party, uh, to win elections. And so um, that opportunity, unfortunately, did not come. And so what you look at when the opportunity, number one, you look at your options, option one, option two. Uh, Governor Peter B is a man that I enjoy a, a, a very good relationship with, a respectable relationship. I, and we, 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 um, while he was in the PDP, we, he remained one of my closest associates in the service, and that is very, was common knowledge. When he was nominated as vice president candidate of our party, I was one of the few early leaders of the service who came and gave practical support, and I said it was the right person, and I said it was right that Vice President Atiku Abaka chose him, um, but that was then. And so now he's pursuing his course in a different political party. Now, the, the, the issue is that in the Nigerian context, 
And at this I said to my people, we, we need to engage. Engagement power is, is about negotiation. It's about discussion. The challenges in the country are far beyond uh, just the South. It's the national in scope. The insecurity is across the nation. You have insecurity in the Northeast. You have insecurity in the South. Uh, in the southeast, we have insecurity in the north central, we have insecurity in the northwest, we have insecurity even in the southwest. So uh, these issues come to the fore. And so advocating, everybody looks at it. Uh, just a second there. First, why are you advocating for microzoning? Point of view. May, may I come in there? Why are you advocating for yes. microzoning to the uh, south rather than the southeast? And why are you saying that uh, the issues no. are beyond the Southeast? Are you insinuating by any chance that the Southeast is not ready or not mature enough? Minds from the Southeast are not mature enough to no. take on the challenges of Nigeria. No, 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 no. That, that, that is far from the truth. What I said, I said if it is micro zone to the Southeast, then that means everybody that will contest for the office will be from the Southeast zone. But the moment you leave it open, then a lot of other factors will come into play. And then you have little or no control of that process. And that, that's the point. And so once it was thrown open, I knew that our chances were not as bright as it should have been. And that became the problem. So that became necessary that you begin to look at alliances mm. that can work. Okay, well, one, one of the things that also comes to mind in that regard, I mean, speaking to some of the issues that you've raised earlier, you know, in response to Chamberlain's questions, is that, you know, PDP is coming back, you know, having, you know, shown remorse and re-strategized to really focus on the issues in the country. The question that came to my mind was, PDP hasn't really been able, I stand to be corrected, play the role of the main opposition party since the APC came into power. I mean, those who you know, are aware would, would always refer to the days in which it was like for everything the PDP did while in power, there was a response from the APC. But most of the time, it would seem like the PDP largely said nothing, and it was just maybe the civil society organizations or the students or other people. And maybe sometimes it would seem like the PDP is trying to play catch up you know, as an opposition party. So there are those who are wondering if the PDP has not been able to play the role of the lead opposition party as at now, what's the assurance we have that this party will be able to take the gauntlet if given the power? Yeah, thank you. Um, governance is completely different from um, activism and different from uh, male opposition. The, the, the APC said to Nigerians, so to Nigerians what they wanted to hear at that time. They told Nigerians, um, one, they were zero corruption. You know today the situation. Uh, we've never had um, a situation where not even the military era is as corrupt as what we have today. They, those promises were made. So for us, we focus on our programs for governance when we clinch power. So the emphasis now is how do we win election. And you do not win an election by shouting to us all the time. What we've been doing as a party is try as much as possible to penetrate to the various nooks and corners, strengthen our structures, and get Nigerians to believe in our party to see that, look, these people are getting ready. And we're winning converts across the country. From the six geopolitical zones, it's, big. it's obvious that PDP is the party to beat in the next election. Yes, we had the luxury of being in government. Immediately, democracy came uh, to being in 1999. So you could say... Oh, we've not gotten out of that governmental uh, situation. Uh, now, some people understand the act of criticizing, and that's why they've forgotten that you criticize as the time to not govern. So they are looking at it. They, they can't provide that governance. For us, we would give Nigerians the government of their desire when, by the grace of God, we are given the opportunity uh, to be re-elected in 2023. And I believe we've learned our lessons, like I said, when you listen to our presidential candidate, it's very obvious that he's a man that has um, significant working experience and that he's ready uh, to lead Nigeria from day one. He's a man that is prepared to offer leadership to our country. Immediately, he's sworn in as president. I think that's what is fundamental. 
Um, perhaps while that, we, yes. unlike the APC administration today, we will not begin to learn, we will not begin to... Well, we, while, while that we is significant... We uh, do not have the luxury yeah. of waiting, we we'll take off immediately. Yeah, yes. while that is significant, which you have said, and you also referenced your candidate now, who your party calls the unifier. But then, as Chamberlain asked you earlier, and we have raised it so, several times, the fact that even now it would seem like the PDP is a lot more divided now that you have a presidential candidate than before. So if that is the case, that there hasn't been a way to bring everybody to, let me use that word, unify everybody at this time, what's the assurance that that's not what's going to play out? under a new or a next PDP government? Vice President Atiku Abubakar is um, a calm, um, very matured uh, man with great institutional memory. And he has shown it in the way he's managed the challenges uh, in our party with calmness and candor. And I'm certain we would um, we'll get over the, this um, situation as we find ourselves. These are very normal. Disagreements are very normal in every home, in every family. And so you see deliberate steps we are taking as a party. Calmly, we are resolving those issues. They have been attended to um, one by one. And you find out that by the time we get ready for election, by the time election comes, uh, PDP would have put all their houses in order. So it, it would not have been too late by then because many still feel that he's not handled the uh, issues raised by Rivers Governor properly so far. But I am not <coughs> Vice President Atiko Abubakar. Um, I, I believe that um, discussions are going on at various levels. I believe consultations are going on at various levels. I believe engagements are also going on at various levels. And I am very certain, knowing the party very well and knowing Vice President Atuka Abaka very well, uh, our issues will be resolved and but the PDP will um, um, give Nigerians the government of their desire. I am very certain we're going to win the election in 2023. And all I urge Nigerians is um, give peace a chance. Um, let's begin to... Uh, appreciate the issues. Uh, as uh, Atuka Baka has shown Nigerians that he has the message. Uh, he showed but, the preparation. But the more we try to give them a chance, I mean, people try to give them a chance, or party members try to give them a chance. They keep seeing headlines that you know, raise more concerns. Today it was about a fresh crisis in PDP as NWC members, five of them returning 151 million naira rent. So it appears as though. Will this thing ever end? I'm not a member of the NWC of our party. Uh, you see, look, what I found that the opposition tries to play up issues that I'm going to... Is what, this from opposition? I, I come to... What, what do you hear about the, PD, about the APC? What do, you hear about they, the, no, what do you hear about the APC? It's a party that operates like a secret court. We are a democratic party. And so in a democratic party, everyone looks at it and says, oh, these are the issues. Oh, all. I do not know the facts of this matter, but we have internal mechanisms of dealing with issues. And of course, um, if anyone said he was paid and he said he's returning the money, I mean, I'm sure they will deal with those. Those are, those are not the issues that will give us good governance. And those are not the issues today that we're looking at. What we're looking at is how do we get Nigerians to begin to say, look, PDP is a party that believes and offers. PDP sets the country up on a pathway to recovery. Mm. PDP sets Nigerians. I mean, when we came out from the military, mm. PDP showed the light. When they came in, they said they were going, there would be light all over the place. What has happened with light today? All the progress we made in telecommunications. Well, I mean, so you see, we are getting prepared to offer governance. I appreciate the despondency. Mm. But, Nigerians, I but, doubt, but what, yes. as we wind down now, what would you say to those who think and analyze it, saying, look, from what they've seen, um, ABC is just going to nick it from what they see because they cite that uh, the emergence of Peter being Labour Party weakens your party because many of the people who appear to be leading the life for him are offshoots of your party. And so that may weaken your party's chances at the centre. Well, like I said, Governor Peter B is um, a politician that's earned his place. A man I respect and have good relationship with. And I know he has um, a growing support base. But we're going into a general election that is scheduled for February uh, 2023. And um, you need a lot of time to penetrate. And now, for us in the PDP, 
Um, if you look at the leadership of our party in the Southeast, we, we were with Governor Peter B when he was in our party. And he's left, and we are there. You see that our numbers have not reduced by any means, and, and we're going to approach the campaigns and the elections. All I urge everyone is um, let's be very cautious. The real danger is any opportunity to the APC. And so we should not inflict self-damage on ourselves. Uh, we should continue. We put our eyes on the ball, and we continue um, to appreciate the situation, the circumstance mm -hmm. as it goes, and realize that only yeah. one man will win the election. Okay. Let's end quickly with this one, and shortly too, if you can, uh, in Imo states. Does the PDP have a chance? Will you be getting to the fray? Obviously, I mean, obviously. Um, our seven months in office, um, within that period, we showed redirection. We realized that yeah, we, we brought about confidence in the people, um, economic prosperity. We restored autonomy of the local governments. And so people could see that life was possible, that governance was possible at local government level. Um, we, uh, we, within that period, we activated every facet of life, be it our cultural revival, uh, rule of law in the states. Um, we provided for emo people again. We gave them confidence again. The civil service, service began to reboom. Before I became governor, they were, they were not paying pensions for six, four months. I came in as governor. I began to pay pensions. Uh, civil servants were paid 70% uh, of their salary due. I okay. came in and restored it to 100%. So there's confidence. So PDP, obviously, is the party to beat in Imo State. And obviously, we're going to win the next election. All it's right. National State yeah. Assembly. And of course, when the time for governorship comes, that is the way to go. All right, well, we'll end it at that point. Uh, we've been speaking with uh, uh, Mecca Hede, her former governor of Imo State. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Well, let's just run through some comments coming through from you out there. Well, Henry says, signing of the peace accord will improve cooperation among political parties, but it is not a panacea. And starting from party primary elections, the entire electoral process ought to be free, fair, and equitable. This is the way to achieve peaceful elections. Harry Awunonu says, followers of any candidate should tame their fanaticism, else it mutates into insurgency. The candidates themselves have roles to play here. Allow plurality of opinions, but use facts and figures in decent language and decent language to convince others. Is politics no longer a game? Well, first, uh, Saki Boyewa chooses to speak about ASU, and he says, let's put rhetoric and emotion aside. ASU problems can't be solved without money, and money doesn't fall from heaven like rain. I have children in Nigeria's universities, but universities should be 100% autonomous, and parents pay for their children's university education. Period. <laughs> well, we thank you for your comments. Keep them coming. And we also thank you for sharing your day with us. Uh, thank you for watching. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Have a wonderful day and a beautiful rest of your weekend. I'm Ayo Bakini. And I am Chamberlain Osa. Goodbye. <laughs>